Man won't kill God. The devil will do it. What have you done? Jesse, you're moving a whole lot of parts around, a whole lot of people around in this film. Yeah. Um, that Machiavellian role must have been really fun to play. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's especially fun because I can, it can kind of, you know, almost sympathize with the character. You know, here's a guy who uh, thinks of himself as this, you know, benevolent leader of this city, Metropolis, and then he sees a guy, Superman, who comes from a different planet, who has different, uh, you know, has a different physicality, uh, and who could destroy the town you know, like, like a nuclear weapon. And so my character says, this guy is an existential threat to us. We should not allow him to exist. And so not only is he moving a lot of pieces around, but he actually, I think, makes a pretty credible argument that what he's doing is right. I, guess, I suppose that is the, that's the journey that the character's on as the, as, as the film proceeds. That yes. He's, that's the starting point, and then the events of, of the film will leave a lasting impression on, on Luthor. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and I think um, one of the really clever uh, uh, renderings of this story is that you, I think, as an audience, start to see Superman in this kind of gray light. You know, Superman is not the kind of perfect, uh, you know, de deified hero. He's actually a person who can be a real uh, kind of, if unchecked, real danger. In that process of you playing the Machiavellian game of steering all the different characters together, some of the things I enjoyed were you don't have the stereotypical henchman to talk to. <laughs> right, right. We don't really see you explaining your plans to anybody. Yeah. And that's a r really nice change. And we don't really yeah. see you necessarily like rolling up your sleeves and at work in the lab. So right. uh, for, for the audience, we're, there's a lot of mystery to, to how things unfold. Right, that's funny. Uh, you are kind of robbed, though, in that process of the evil plan monologue. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank God. I mean, yeah, I think the script was so uh, well written and I think even more specifically in my interest um, uh, the character was written so well and so you're right it, it kind of excises all these kind of typical things like yeah, explaining the plot and then you know having the kind of bumbling henchman who keeps dropping my stuff and yet for some reason I the most powerful in the world, man in the world don't fire him um, and replace him with you know some you know more clerically inclined person um, so yeah, it is, uh, yeah, I was happy that it dispensed of all that stuff. Um, and amongst all these superhero characters, these square jawed, larger than life human beings to yeah, start yeah, with, yeah. little alone adding in the powers. Yeah. Obviously your screen presence is very different to theirs. A different shaped jaw. Yeah. Well, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oblong. It's, it's, well, it's no, it's no Clifton. I know, I know. I know. I was going to have one surgically put in, but I thought it was too late. Uh, as you as you share screen time with them, you've got a very yeah. The presence is very different. To maintain that intensity, was that a was that a challenge? And how did you deal with being on and off camera with the the kind of hyper verbose character that you have? Oh, um, I'm yeah. I am naturally that. I guess I'm not naturally evil, but I, I if unchecked, will continue to talk. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, to me, the kind of only difficult part of doing a movie like this is that because there is so much um, there's so many moving pieces and big sets and everything that there's a, there ends up being a lot of downtime and so actually the difficult part is the downtime the easy part is kind of the maintenance of the character I thought uh, while watching the way you're interacting with some of the characters particularly um, uh, political figures that much of your conversation was almost misdirection that you're like you're a fast talker but yeah. it was almost uh, yeah. that's almost inconsequential to what you're actually up to. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right, yeah. So, so you're sort of operating on two different trains at the same time. Yeah, yeah, that's very well examined. Yeah, I observed, yes, that's exactly right. Yeah, he's a character who can kind of uh, talk around uh, an issue in, a, in an attempt to manipulate. Um, and he is kind of like emotionally unhinged. So, um, yeah, it's funny, it's like he's talking to politicians who we normally think of as being able to do that very well, but he's actually using that technique on them. You know the oldest lie in America? That power can be innocent. 